Today we're unboxing Splash Learn. For this unboxing, we'll be ranking Splash Learn's pricing, compatibility, installation, user interface, resources, support, and reviews. This video is not sponsored by Splash Learn, and all opinions expressed are purely my own. Let's start off with what is Splash Learn? Heading over to trustradius.com, product details. Splash Learn is a teaching supplement that makes learning fun for K-5 students and teaching hassle-free for teachers by covering over 400 math skills aligned with the curriculum of your choice. So it's a tool for teachers. It sounds like math specific. I guess we'll find out a little bit more as we jump into a trial. All right, so for pricing, Splash Learn actually does not list it on their website. Um, which is a little frustrating. Uh, from one web search, it's saying prices start at $7.99 a month. Um, I can't totally confirm that as they don't publish it, which is very unfortunate. Uh, hopefully they can add that in the future. So Splash Learn does have apps for iOS and Android. Otherwise it looks like it is, uh, there's not like a desktop app from what I'm seeing. Compatibility wise, that's, uh, that's not the best. Obviously we'd like to see an actual uh, computer application but on the bright side being browser based on the computer like that does mean that you can do it from mac uh windows linux whatever the heck you want all right so for installation then um i'm going to download the app just to kind of see how easy it is to get into on the on mobile so it looks like there are multiple apps so one of them is the parents version which is to monitor progress and there's another version that is for kids which is um whatever activities and games you've created. It does look like there's a certain level of gamification built into this. Um, in terms of installation, obviously it's browser based, so it's pretty much just there in whichever browser you're choosing. Um, I'm on Edge, so I feel like it's got to be fairly widely compatible. Um, Chromium based, so if you're using Google Chrome, you're not going to run into any issues. Um, I did just download the parents app and log in. No issues. It was pretty easy, pretty simple to jump into. Looking at user interface, this is what the uh, kids will be experiencing, whoever's doing the activities. Looks clean, looks pleasing, looks like I'm yeah, in a kid's learning center. Makes sense. Hopefully I learned something today. Today's learning path, let's see here. Ooh, count all to add. Okay, we got a pig loading. Uh, all right. How many squares are there in all? Okay, if they keep talking like that, I uh, this is going to be a 40 minute video. How many squares are there in all? Uh, there would be five, I think, right? Yeah, that How makes sense. Many? Oh, okay, so we need to subscribe to get more. So the trial seems pretty limited in that I can only do like an activity. All topics. Uh, I mean, it, it's like. It's a responsive for like a website. Obviously, it's really responsive. To hear the letter sounds. Okay, you can't skip in this one. So that trap. could be obnoxious. Trap. Trap. Help Buck Buck find the sound. Okay. Tur, tur. And you literally right. have to wait before you can do the activity. That's a oh, that's obnoxious. Sound. Yeah, you can't click past it. That sucks. It wants you to click very specific Trip. places, which is kind tur. of annoying. That's right. Uh, tur. Yeah, you. That's right. Still can't skip Oh, through. you got yeah. a pearl. I would like to see that on the user trap. interface improve. Um, trap. 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 And what is this doing? Trap. How, what trap. do I gotta? How do I have trap. to do this so that you will take it? That's right. I'm. I'm not trip. like super trip. impressed on. Trip. I mean, like the aesthetic trip. is cool. Trip. Obviously, it's buggy. Trip. Like, do I need trip. to go over here? Do I need to go over here? Trip. Trip. Double click. Trip. Trip. Drag. That's right. So dragging sometimes oh, works. Dragging sometimes doesn't work. Let's try with this one. Let's be really calculated. Tram. 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 So like, no. Tram. That's so right. So maybe right here is the spot. Oh, you, you. I guess for mobile, pearl. maybe this would kind of make sense. Like you wouldn't be as Tram. precise, so they think you would just drag it all the way down. That's right. When it comes oh, to like desktop interface though, which I think Trim. more often I would bet kids would end up being on these. Trim. Okay. Trim. So even then, it is not. That's right. Okay. Oh, you got a pearl. I'm not overly impressed on the user interface. Gotta say. Oh, you got a pearl. The exact same soundbite, on repeat every time you do it. 
trapeze. That is so obnoxious. <laughs> I gotta say. That's right. Oh, okay. It's gonna let us do. Buck Buck is on an underwater Buck mission Buck. to explore new sounds. Sound. I was hoping after that prim, first one you'd prim, be able to click prim, through. Prim, prim, it doesn't look like you can. Prim. And even sometimes right. it doesn't like. That's the per. So it doesn't sound. click through sometimes. So like. It really pretzel, responsiveness. Pretzel, pretzel. It's just not there for me. That's right. I think we've kind of gotten the gist of how a couple of different games look. Um, when we're talking about the logic of the interface, I think a lot of my issue comes around like, OK, so we have a slider up here. Um, the problem is like when you're in math, all topics, all topics within math. I, would, I don't know that I would use the term topic. For that topic to me would say like category like abc math i and that's just kind of my opinion i find a little issue with the logic of that it seems like there's a lot of cool like variation here i wish i could explore more of it in the free trial um to really get a feel for like is this a super basic level game and like do they get a lot better do they get a lot more uh responsive and reactive i have no idea i don't know um I would pass on this, honestly, and I would look at free resources online because there are free resources online for a lot of different learning games, and I'm really just not sold on this. For resources, I'm not seeing anything inside of the app. So they do have a blog, but like I literally had to Google it to find their blog. Um, that's really annoying and frustrating. Um, but on the bright side, it looks like there's a lot of different resources available. The ease of getting to it is just not great. Let's say, whatever, we're loving this, we're using it, we're having issues, uh, we need support. Where is our support at? Okay, so it's not built in to the direct interface, it looks like. Weird, there's a scroll bar within a scroll bar. That's a little obnoxious, but whatever. Now we're in the parent dashboard. Maybe this is or the teacher, parent, whatever dashboard. We want support, where is it? Where do I ask questions? Unfortunately, I think you'd have to go back to the main splashroom.com for support, I'm guessing. Oh, and it doesn't even do that. It just pushes you in. And maybe on the all con like unlimited stuff, you have different things. Hey, hey, we have pricing. We found pricing. It is not published. It is inside when you actually have done a trial and need to create an account uh, and want to subscribe. So one child build yearly is $89.99. Uh, it looked like that's at $7.49 a month. I'm guessing if you skipped a monthly, it'd be like $11.99 a month. Um, up to three children s jumps down to four, four fourteen a month, or uh, build yearly at one hundred fifty dollars. So monthly is twelve dollars a month. Um, it sounds like that isn't a difference between one child or three child children, and that's for math and reading. And obviously, if you jump down, it gets a little cheaper if you're just doing math. That's one child build yearly at fifty nine ninety nine. Cool, uh, and reading is the same. So. And then up to three children jumps to $99 a year. Okay, so this is cool pricing information. I'm glad that they eventually had it. Still not overly impressed that it's not published. Their use of Twitter is not for support, it looks like. It looks like it's primarily marketing based. Um, I'm not seeing any replies. That's a little frustrating, um, given especially like how kind of hard it is to get support in the first place and find support. Um, yeah, a little frustrating. I would, I would guess the same thing here again. Uh, yeah, so if they were using this for support, they would say something like message us if you're having issues. Um, and they have resources here. Um, obviously, I'm not logged in, so that's not going to really work. But let's see. So they have they're using Linktree to push their most recent blogs. Um, it's a really interesting strategy on how they're trying to leverage their content because why why aren't you building it into the app it just seems like a, a very not only missed opportunity but like frustrating experience we'll see what videos they have um at 2.19 k subs and okay we have a decent amount of video the most recent one was two days ago before that was seven months ago so so I, we could say infrequent video, but maybe it's just based on like quality content. This looks like child targeted content, like in terms of like focusing on the education, maybe not necessarily the teachers. 
Oh, it looks like mixed content. Some of this looks targeted towards the teachers and parents, and then some of it looks targeted towards the kids. I would definitely, they should really split that out. It makes it really hard to like, just start, like I wouldn't subscribe to this if I was trying to learn from these videos. Overall support, ugh, not super impressed. What do people think of Splash Learn? The TR score is a nine out of 10, but that is only factoring with three reviews and ratings. So not necessarily a hard line to really draw on. Um, we're seeing, you can easily see statistics and problems answered, which the dashboard like on the parents end looked fine. It looks like what I would expect it to, not necessarily more or less. Questions sometimes get repetitive and incorrect. Yep, I was definitely feeling that. Splash Learn makes the learning process easy and simple to follow in a linear fashion. I would say once you're in the courses, yes. I would disagree on the, on the interact, like on the actual user interface. It was very much like a non-linear process. Um, a lot of kids learn visually um, and actually don't want necessarily a super linear process. Sometimes the games are a little more difficult to figure out than what one might expect. I would say, yeah, like definitely on the level of uh, uh, just functionality. Like they don't necessarily work the best. Let's see what other review sites are kind of rating them. Commonsense.org, I know that's a bigger education resource. They're giving them a four out of five stars. Community ratings also four out of five stars with 26 reviews. So that's kind of cool. Overall design is clear, colorful, and simple to navigate. Each skill asks a lot of questions. Most questions are text-based. Some have audio available. Hints are, aren't are given for incorrect answers and gameplay help isn't available. Yes, so it seems like other people have caught on to the support issue that I was seeing. I mean, it looks like overall the sentiment is it's a tool that people are finding helpful. The degree of that help is probably debatable and moreover like the functionality. I would, I would be curious to see like kids reviewing it like that have actually gone through it versus necessarily the parents. Um, from the parents side, you just want to know did they do it completion and you know how they did scores and it provides that but in terms of how customizable is it i have no idea because we weren't able to look at it maybe that's what's tipping people in a four stars out of five rating but uh we can't really assess that so we can't really figure that out um they list the price as free here which we know now is incorrect yeah so the sentiments overall like it seems like people like the tool all right, to conclude, let's uh, summarize each of our points here. We had pricing. I'm going to give it a thumbs down for pricing. Uh, it needs to be publicly published, um, especially when you have some sites quoting it as free, some sites just kind of quoting random numbers. Uh, the only way to combat that is to publish it yourself versus having to sign up for an account and then go to subscribe to be able to see what the price is. Looking at compatibility, um, I'm going to give it a thumbs down. We didn't really go over integrations, but this does integrate with Google Classroom and Clever. Uh, not super impressed that there's only two integrations for it, um, as well as there's no desktop application available. There's only the mobile app for parents or children uh, or teachers or children, whichever you're looking at. I think that maybe by opening it up a little bit, maybe they can find some more stability in their product. Making it browser based is probably what's going to lean to a large variety of experiences for users. Looking at installation, We'll say thumbs up because browser based, there's not much to do um, on mobile. There was only one step, which was logging in. There was no extra kind of pop ups or anything that got in the way. It works. Cool. User interface. I'm going to give it a thumbs down. Like, yeah, the aesthetic is like clearly fun, functional kind of. But when you're actually using it, the logic of it, the layout is frustrating. The actual stability is frustrating. Like it doesn't work that well. And I'm a, you know, 31 year old person who has graduated from college and I still found issues with just trying to do basic drag and drop functions. And I don't really want a kid having to face <laughs> frustrations with, is it me? Am I the problem or what is it? Um, yeah, so that is a thumbs down on interface. So for resources, I'm really kind of torn on it. Um, thinking about, like, I know that there are blogs out there to help you with uh, the tool. I don't know how much they focus on like issues with the tool, but there's definitely like resources on learning, their YouTube channel. Um, they're really pushing their blog content on social, uh, but when it comes to inside of the app, there's nothing. And for that fact, I'm gonna give it a thumbs down. Uh, when you're using a tool, you want that tool to give you all the resources you need. There was a guide when I first logged in, but then there was not like a little tick to jump back to the guide. There was no, there was no way to get back in there. Um, 
and maybe a piece of that is just trying to make a very simple platform but the simplicity uh makes it overly complicated similarly with support i'm gonna give it a thumbs down as well because there's no chat there's no like support way to click in you have to be logged like if you're not logged in you can see support you can see the contact us page but if you're logged in to splash learn you can't access anything you're pretty much just adrift um you have to open a new tab you have to google stuff just to find the things because otherwise if you just go to splashlearn.com it'll just take you back to your dashboard it's not helpful it gets in the way of using the tool right and getting uh the answers you're looking for when you need support and then moving into reviews we're gonna give it a thumbs up uh, i think that's pretty clear it's uh four out of five on common sense education it's nine out of ten uh tr score on trustradius.com users are clearly enjoying it that being said it is a very small segment of reviews uh on both of those sites between the two of them there's 29 reviews that we're really looking at so that might not be the best thing to really look at and the last update on common sense was 2019 so it may not be super reflective of covid of the way remote learning has adjusted and changed but i will still give it a thumbs up knowing that the reviews that we could find and looked at were all positive all right, so looking at the totals on the scoreboard, we're gonna have to give Splash Learn an overall thumbs down. It just does not function the way we expect an application to function in 2022, especially given all the changes in COVID and remote learning, the expectations I think are a lot higher on functionality and usability and how many other tools are out there, how many free resources there are for teachers. It just, it does not, it doesn't stack up to expectations. But that being said, if you disagree, Head over to trustradius.com. You can leave a more in-depth review. I can definitely check that out and make sure I see. Maybe there's maybe there's points on the free trial that are just significantly different from the full version. Like I've been saying, I hope so. I hope that it's more functional and it caters to users a lot better. Otherwise, comment below if there's alternatives that you like, or if you just blatantly disagree with anything or I did something wrong, because I definitely could have. Thanks for watching. As always, like and subscribe for more. Head over to trustradius.com for more detailed reviews, comparisons, and software alternatives.